You are listening to Show Up Arizona. My name is Billy Harfosh. And today, for the very first time, I am broadcasting from an incredible studio. This place is amazing. Dave Pratt's Star Worldwide Networks Studios. And my guest today, you've heard me talk a lot about the debate coming up, and uh, I'm kind of upset. I'm angry. There's one man that I believe, because we live in a free country, we live in a capitalist nation, we live in a democracy, should be on the debate stage. And today I have Mr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s communications director. I'd like to welcome Dell Bigtree to the show. Dell, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Billy? I'm doing awesome. And, you know, we're going to get into the upcoming debate and why they, whoever they uh, yeah. happens to be, are afraid of Mr. Kennedy. But first, I just wanted to start with a little story. So a couple weeks back out here in Scottsdale, Arizona, I had the privilege of uh, listening to Mr. Kennedy speak, and I had the privilege to uh, chat with him a little bit. And, you know, I interview a lot of politicians on this show, but something... Even as a 38-year-old American, something came over me, and I don't mean to sound cheesy or corny right now, but I was like looking at this man and looking into his eyes, and I said, holy cow, that's a Kennedy. You know, this, this charisma, this, this body language, this look, this way about him, uh, it really struck me in person. So my question to you, as somebody that is around him all the time— let us look under the hood. What is Mr. Kennedy like behind the scenes? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm lucky to really call him a friend of mine. I've known him for years. We've worked together. We've brought uh, lawsuits together against government agencies for lying about you know issues in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, but behind the scenes, what I think people might be shocked to find is he's really quite funny, and, and he's an amazing storyteller. Uh, you know, at a dinner with Bobby, you you never know what story he's going to bring out, but it's the life experience from his childhood all the way through adulthood. I mean, it could be a story about catching a wild bird in Africa and training it to, you know, hunt for him, which he's done, or speaking to the Pope, you know, as a kid and the people gathering around his family or even crazy stories of assassination attempts, uh, all of which, when you're around him, you just think, you know, how is this guy just so down to earth when he's lived an experience that in many ways is so much different than mine? And then the stories he tells about winning lawsuits or working with fishermen, you know, trying to clean up the Hudson River or indigenous people trying to stop the logging of their land, I mean, across the board, this is just somebody that has been so dedicated to humanity and has had fun doing it. And I and it just what I want to say is those of us that work on this campaign, this is not your average campaign. I mean, they'll report how, you know, very few of us have ever been in politics before. I'm his, you know, communications director. I've never worked on a campaign before. His, you know, his uh, daughter-in-law, Amaryllis Kennedy, um, is dedicating all her time as campaign manager, never been uh, on this before. But so many of us are here because we're drawn to who he is. And we see this as this spectacular opportunity that's making us all drop everything else we're doing and saying, if the world knew who this man was, there'd be no one else anyone would be voting for. I'm telling you, he crosses all party lines. He speaks from a place of reason and wisdom. I mean, wisdom, a word that I don't think we could really apply to, to any of the most recent presidents. And everyone sees that when you see him in these long form podcasts and answering any question you can ask him. Um, he is truly, I mean, I, I, I'm a fan. He's my friend. Uh, but he's a friend to everyone that meets him, and I think that's what makes him so great. And Dell Bigtree, when I look at people that are running for high office, I often ask myself, what is their why? So when I was listening to Mr. Kennedy speak and when I was able to to speak with him, I got the sense of something a little different from most politicians that I meet. So I would like you to take your political cap off for a moment Good. and get into Mr. Kennedy's why. I don't see it as a as a money issue. I don't see it as a some sort of a, a power issue. I certainly don't see it as a fame issue. I mean, after all, like we said, he's, he's a Kennedy. So what is his why for going through all this, all the scrutiny, all the, the 
the, the public attacking him, the media attacking him. Um, why is he running? Well, I mean, it's at great personal sacrifice. I mean, as I pointed out, he has a really amazing life. He does amazing things. I mean, he just won, won a multi-billion dollar lawsuit against Monsanto uh, uh, on their glyphosate product that sprayed on our crops, proving it causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I mean, this is a guy that has so much success, arguably the most successful environmental attorney uh, that we've ever seen. But when we asked him why, uh, when I was in the meetings from the very beginning, as I said, I was a, you know in a handful of people, he said, I'm, I'm pondering this idea of running for president. And what he said is, I just believe our country is going in the wrong direction. And I've watched the party that I have been a part of, the Democrats, starting wars. I, I see them censoring uh, people on the Internet and censoring their opponents. And at this point, you know, now we're further down the road, attempting to throw them in jail versus debate them on a stage. Um, that is not the party that he grew up in, or did I. I mean, I grew up a, a, a Democrat also, and I'm totally disenfranchised, uh, especially by the warmongering. Um, you know, Biden appears to be pushing us into World War III, moving NATO, uh, you know, into Ukraine, which is crossing the line that we have, you know, promised we would never cross for years. It's a whole other subject. And then on the other side, you have Donald Trump. And we watched four years of a guy who said he'd run the country like a business and then shut, you know, millions of businesses down, destroyed our economy uh, and took away our right. And not only when our jobs were being shut down in the pandemic, took away our right to even go to a courtroom and fight for it. Um, you know, all of these things, I think, are reasons why we have a border that is now wide open um, and is being run by the drug cartels. I mean, it, you know, when you think of, you know, is this humane to have both sides of the border now so total, totally dominated by drug cartels, there's a better way forward. And I think for all those reasons, and what he said is when my father decided to run, and this is what, how he answered the question we asked. He said, my father didn't expect to win. Um, in fact, had no desire really to run as president. But he knew that he would be asked what he thought of Johnson, what he thought of the Democratic Party, and would he support it. And, you know, he said, um, I would have to say I don't support the Democratic Party any longer. And his father said, a Kennedy can't make that statement. Therefore, the only way I can avoid making that statement is I'm going to have to run myself. And Bobby told a story about how his father just said, I'm going to tell the people the truth. And I don't care if I win. It's just important that they really know what's actually happening around them right now because they're being lied to. And he went on tour and, for instance, stopped into a university uh, and, and they asked, you know, are you going to protect us from the Vietnam War and continue that protection for college students? He says, no. I'm going to take that protection away because rich kids shouldn't be, you know, protected while we send, you know, black Americans and and those uh, that are less fortunate across to fight our wars. Everyone's going to fight a war if we're going to be in it. And the only way we're going to stop it is if we stop allowing, you know, uh, the elitist to have their kids protected and things like that. He got booed in the beginning. And by the time he ended the speech, as Bobby put it, they were standing and cheering. And that's what Bobby's doing. He's telling the people the truth. And for the first time, they're hearing it. He's running on truth. He's being honest about what is really going on in the Ukraine and Russia and how this is a proxy war against 78 percent of America. I just saw a poll. 78 percent of America say, yeah, let's rush into that war. Let's defend Ukraine. Not aware that Putin is saying you're 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 pushing me towards, you know, nuclear war. Bobby's the only one being honest on that issue. He's the only one standing, you know, and saying, look, we need to care about Lat Latin Americans and people um, that immigrate. We are, you know, a country of immigrants, but we cannot have a wide open border. He's being reasonable, saying we need a policy of, you know, tall fences and wide gates where we adjudicate those that are coming across the border as soon as they get here, not seven, not sent, handing them a get out of jail free card where they run all over the country in seven years, come back for a hearing that you're never going to arrive to. We need to get on top of these issues. And more importantly than ever, we need to draw back this war machine. We've got to stop funding. You know, we've watched 
trillions of dollars go out the door for other countries that we basically level, leave them in mayhem. The Middle East is no better off than when we started the Iraq war. In fact, it's worse. And what are we? We are watching our own infrastructure falling apart. We're not taking care of our own. We can't afford the groceries on the shelves. We can't afford the gasoline because our dollars being diminished because they're printing money to pour it into wars in other countries. When we draw back that war machine and end the forever wars, we can build into an economy. Our strength in America, as Bobby's pointing out, should not be because you fear us and because we can bomb you and kill you or assassinate you. It should be because we have the strongest economy in the world. We have the brightest ideas. We are the freest people. We have no censorship. And every nation should strive to be like us. That's not who we are anymore. It's who we used to be. And that's who Bobby, that's why he's running. That's why he's here, is to, to become that exceptional example, you know, example of liberty and justice and the right to the pursuit of happiness. Speaking to Dell Bigtree, he is RFK Jr.'s communications director. So, Mr. Bigtree, I saw a recent poll, 74% of Americans, and all you got to do is go around your own dining room table or go to your local uh, watering hole and ask people, 74% of Americans are sick of Donald Trump and they're sick of Joe Biden. And in fact, they don't want either of them. And what people say is, a country of 300 plus million people, how are we left with these two? But there is an alternative. Yeah. There's a little something in politics that you're familiar with called an October surprise. Whether it's an October surprise or, or maybe an August surprise, there could be something that comes up. It could be at one of these conventions. It could be one of Trump's court cases. It could be a, a mental slip by Joe Biden. Is that, I don't want to say your campaign is waiting for that or hoping for that or banking on that, but could something happen here where all of a sudden the polls start to shift and Holy Christmas, RFK very well could be the next president of the United States. You know, the only reason something like that would even matter is because America right now are afraid to vote their conscience. And what we are seeing in the polls, we just did a brilliant uh, poll with Zogby. In fact, the largest poll done in America of 26,000 people, your average poll is about 2,000 people. So it, it has, you know, um, an error rate of about 0%. And we, what was polled was head-to-head -head matches. Forget about, like, it showed, like, Biden, Trump, and, and Bobby Kennedy all running against each other. Trump wins. And then it, we, it ran, you know, head-to-head. -head. And Biden against Trump, Biden loses uh, even, you know, I mean, even worse. And then it ran, you know, Bobby Kennedy against Biden. And Bobby destroys uh, Joe Biden, wins by just a landslide. And then it ran Bobby against Donald Trump head to head and Bobby wins much tighter, but he wins. And what it shows us is that and that Bobby is the only one that can beat Donald Trump to begin with. It also shows that Joe Biden has no ability to win with any uh, formation of the election as it is. And then when you look at the polling on favorability, Bobby has been ahead of both of them the entire time in the positive category. He is the most favorable candidate. So what is shocking is that we even need to talk about an October surprise, because what we're seeing in these polls is that America already wants to vote for Bobby, but I call it Stockholm syndrome. They're actually petrified to leave their captors. This this, you know, this capture by this two party system that is, you know, virtually completely rigged. We didn't see an honest uh, Democratic, you know, process in looking when Bobby was running as a de Democrat. There were no debates. Biden wasn't going to be involved. You can't get into the news. The DNC owns the media. And so therefore, nobody else is discussed. And, and that's now true in the national poll. And as you pointed out, CNN is having a debate and they're attempting to illegally cheat our candidate, Bobby Kennedy, out of that debate. Why? Because there won't be an October surprise if in July Bobby Kennedy is on a stage with Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I, tell, I will tell you this right now. You put Bobby on that stage and you will watch him go from the, you know, between the 16 percent approval rate. I mean, 16 um, percent rating is at some polls have him as high as 26 percent. I believe he could jump 20 percent and get and into the lead in one debate. That is how spectacular he is. 
So the October surprise we're looking forward to is the moment the media stops lying to the people, stops manipulating them, and, and recognizes that there is a, the first legitimate independent candidate since Ross Perot, and that he is poised to win because he's the most favored candidate in America. If something happens to Trump or something happens to Biden, we're not running on that. We're running on the fact that we have the most eloquent, dynamic, and brilliant candidate in the race, and everyone in this campaign believes we win fair and square. So without asking you to get into all the rules of qualifying for a presidential debate, can you tell me right now this upcoming debate in June, uh, Mr. Kennedy for sure will not be on that stage. Is that correct? That is not true. We are. We believe that CNN will come to its senses. It laid down a set of rules that we believe that we have just met. They said they wanted uh, the candidates to all have um, access to 270 electoral college votes. We've just turned in um, enough votes that we're now past the 270 mark, meaning signatures in enough states to be past that mark. They want four polls that show Bobby over 15 percent. There's been like seven of them, but they've been very selective as a way to try and isolate uh, Bobby out, but we now have three polls that even fit their criteria. We're expecting one more poll and we should be on that debate stage. But let me be clear, we're also filing an FEC violation because it's illegal for a network to, you know, unfairly rig uh, the system so that one politician gets more airtime than another. In this case, asking for 270 electoral college votes, Bobby's the only one that's actually going to meet that criteria. Joe Biden and Donald Trump have not even been nominated by their party. Therefore, they're eligible for zero electoral college votes. So if they go forward with this criteria, then what they're saying is we're rigging it against another politician. That's an FEC violation, and we are ready to go to court over that. Well, in the media, as you know, Mr. Bigtree, we call that equal time. Time, and that's a very serious Correct. law in my business. So are you telling me this comes down to the network? This comes down to CNN, the executives, the suits in the high tower at CNN. They decide whether Kennedy will be on that debate stage or not? That's exactly right. CNN went outside of the usual commission on presidential debates, which has handled debates, I think, for the last 36 years. They've, they've been the ones that um, it, you know, brought the rules and set it up. They pulled it away. Uh, the commission is angry about it and said, we're going to run it ourselves. Uh, and so, but they stole their criteria. I mean, this criteria of 15% and 270 electoral college votes, but you see the mistake, right? They stole it from the commission, did it themselves. But what they didn't think about is the commission's debates usually happen after the nominations um, you know, at, you know, by the DNC and the RNC after they're over at their conventions. By moving the date up as early as they have, they took those criteria, but now the two candidates that they're trying to protect can't even meet those criteria. Right. I mean, it just shows you what a clown show mainstream media is right now. But we are expecting that CNN will realize they're going to be in serious jeopardy um, and I don't think they want to be there. They're, they're, you know, if they want to continue to be a respectable news agency, then they should present the three top candidates uh, that are viable, especially because America, as you pointed out, I think you said 74 percent. I've seen 75, 78, as high as 80 percent are not happy with the choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Well, they have another choice. They deserve to hear what that choice sounds like when they're asked questions. They deserve to hear Robert Kennedy Jr. in this debate and then see for themselves. I mean, we're talking about the leader of the free world. Do we want the one that's selected by CNN and that's selected by the DNC and selected by the RNC? Or are we looking for the politician that the people think is the best representation for ourselves in these incredible times on the you know edge of World War III, an economy that is absolutely destroyed, um, you know, inflation through the roof. Just the cost of the debt alone is more than our defense spending. And in, you know, in, a, in just a few short years, almost all of the taxes we bring in will just be paying the interest on that debt. They deserve to hear from someone that has ideas on how to actually do something about that. And most importantly, we deserve a candidate that can end the, you know, this sort of virtual civil war that's going on. The rage and the anger and the vitriol that is tearing our country apart. That has happened with both of these last two presidents. 
both Donald Trump and Joe Biden have created such a divisive and divided nation, we can't do anything substantive that lasts. And so when you look at the polling on Robert Kennedy Jr., you see that he's polling equally from independents, equally from Republicans and Democrats. This is a man that can heal the divide and get us back to remembering that when we're at a football game cheering with each other and high-fiving each other, we're not hating each other because what party we represent. We're there as Americans or we're there as supporting our team. We've got to get back to Team America if we're going to deal with the pressures that are coming from around the world, globalism attacking our border, you know, migrants coming through and and, and taking away jobs, an economy that's absolutely destroyed, and a war machine that is taking everything we know and love. We need to come together to make those things happen. And Robert Kennedy Jr. is that candidate. He is the one that's going to heal the divide. And people need to see that, hear that voice in this debate. I have to tell you, at the event, the Kennedy, Kennedy event I was at a couple of weeks back, I was sitting there in the front row and watching this man speak for hours. I think there was four questions. Joe Polish was the moderator, um, and I just talked to Joe yesterday. But it was like four questions, and it was like a two-hour event. That's all he needed, and he just told story yeah. after story after story, and so poignant and so kind and so strong. And, and I only thing I could think about was Donald Trump and Joe Biden on that debate stage. I said, these two parties— do not want this man up there. Because like you said, the American people, if they heard some of his stories, if they heard things beyond all of the criticism he gets, beyond all of the vaccine stuff and all of that stuff, it does, to be fair, turn a large percentage of our population off. That's just the numbers, right? Uh, if they heard him on a national stage on CNN or Fox or one of these big debates, I got to tell you, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are going to be very scared and they're not going to want to see that. Uh, Mr. Bigtree, thanks for coming on the show. We're going to end with this. I want to talk about the two-party system very quickly. As someone that's lived all over the world and lived under different styles of government, I just don't understand why we're stuck with red and blue and why an independent can't break through on the national stage and, and when that will happen. Do you think, very simply, the two-party system's days are numbered? I do. I do. We have a lot of hope right now uh, for, uh, you know, Bobby Kennedy and, and this, you know, independent run. Um, every day we're gaining ground. Every day we're gaining numbers. More and more people are waking up and they're all saying the same thing. Oh, my God. Have you seen Bobby speak? Have you heard him speak? Because it's not what I thought. He's not this crazy person the media has tried to paint him out to be. And remember that media is owned by the same corporate influences that own our government. We have a totally corrupted government. This is what Donald Trump ran on the first time he was running as president. I'm going to clean up the swamp, but he didn't. He instead hired John Bolton to be, you know, you know, head of foreign affairs and locked us down because the WHO and the international power uh, mongers, uh, you know, told him to and destroyed our economy, all things of which he said he wouldn't do. And, you know, he had, he had Tony Fauci, an unelected lifelong bureaucrat, were handed the keys to our nation under Trump and let run it. You have the DNC, both of these parties, what makes it difficult is they've been in place so long, they have totally built a system, gerrymandered, if you will, our entire country so that they don't think they can be beat. And they have rules like Bi Joe Biden can raise nearly a million dollars per person because he's attached the DNC. And Donald Trump similarly attached the RNC. As an independent candidate, we can only raise $6,600 per person. It's these types of things that we are overcoming. We are overcoming incredible odds. You think with all of that, with being denied access to mainstream media most of the time and not talking about it, and ha you know having to pay for our own secret service, which has never happened before. Joe Biden refused, I think, for the seventh request to uh, get secret service, which every candidate in history that's ever asked for it's gotten it. And we're talking about Robert Kennedy Jr., son of a man who was assassinated, 
and nephew of a man who was assassinated. You would think he would meet that criteria, especially since he's that third party candidate everyone's looking at. It's this level of corruption, of the lawfare we're seeing against Donald Trump, which, you know, Bobby has said, I want to beat Donald Trump fair and square. I want to beat him on his policies, on the fact that he destroyed our economy, ran up an $8 trillion debt, which was more of a deficit than every president before him put together, not try to beat him in lawsuits. This is how pathetic pathetic and disgusting this system has become that we're running a man that most people think can't really run the country in Joe Biden, and then we're trying to beat his opponent in a courtroom instead in, if, by the American people getting the chance to vote. This shows, I mean, this is when you know that the system's dying. This is when you know it's falling apart, when it doesn't make sense to anyone any longer. That is what, you know, I think this campaign is going to do. It's giving us a jump off place to go to something that makes sense again, that, that is, it, you know, fights for the people and the will of the people, of, for, and by the people, thinks about our Constitution. We believe that this message is, is getting through and is going to get stronger and stronger every day. And we're here to fix the American political system and kick the money changers out of our government, get rid of the corporate capture of all of our regulatory agencies, which both of these parties are deeply ensconced in. Robert Kennedy Jr. has been suing those um, corporate entities that are in our regulatory agencies. Agencies. He knows who they are, and he is going to go in and give this government back to the people. Dell Bigtree, uh, spitting straight fire, a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for being on the program. We welcome you back on any time. Keep us up to date on the campaign, and hopefully we'll have Mr. Kennedy himself down the road. And I got to tell you one last thing. Arizona, as you know, a very free, open thinking, and most importantly, independent state. So you watch those poll numbers. I think that uh, your candidate might do better than most people think out here in the desert. Dell Bigtree, thank you very much. This is Show Up Arizona. My name is Billy Harfosh, broadcasting for the first time from the beautiful Dave Pratt Star Worldwide Network Studios. Thank you so much for watching.